Are you planning a trip to the mountains to maybe go hiking or RVing and you're taking your animals along? Well, have you ever thought that they might get altitude sickness? Today on Colorado Martini Living. Make sure you stay for the whole video so you can see all the tips for helping your animal with altitude sickness. So many of us love to take our dogs or our cat, even our rabbits on trips with us. Many of us go on high altitude hikes and we love taking our dogs with us. But can you recognize if your animals had altitude sickness? Because if you're going to 6,000 feet and above, most likely they could suffer from it. So today I'm going to talk about the signs of altitude sickness in animals and some tips to prevent it. What a lot of people don't realize is that when they travel to New Mexico and Colorado and Wyoming and even Montana, you think that you're not that high up because you're not in the mountains, but you are actually in altitude. So if you travel to some of these places and you're trying to figure out, why am I so winded? Why am I so exhausted? Why can't I catch my breath when I go up a flight of stairs? you might be suffering from altitude sickness and it might just be a mild case. So as you go up in altitude, the air gets thinner and thinner and the harder it is to take a breath. So as you know, I live in Colorado, so you'd think I'd be used to altitude. I live at 5,500 feet above sea level, but for every 2,000 feet that you go up, you have to reacclimate. Thing you might not think about are your animals. They might be suffering from altitude sickness also. A lot of times we don't give them a ton of water when we're in the car because we don't want to have to keep stopping, but you're doing them an injustice. They need the water just as much as you do. So let's say you're taking a drive or maybe even RVing across the country and you come to Wyoming and your intentions are not to go to the mountains but it's going to take you a couple of days to get where you're going so you're driving along I-80 you are going across a lot of high altitude points for instance Cheyenne Wyoming is 6,063 feet above sea level Laramie, Wyoming is 7,165 feet above sea level. Rawlings, Wyoming is 6,834 feet above sea level. And all the way over to Green River is 6,115 feet. So as you're traveling on the I-80, you don't realize you're in altitude and your pets might be suffering. Even when you're in the southern regions of the United States, you might be traveling through altitude. A lot of people don't realize Albuquerque, New Mexico is about 5,300 feet in altitude. Denver is just a little bit higher than Albuquerque. So who is at risk? Well, your senior dogs or dogs with underlining or undiagnosed cardiac or respiratory issues. 
Breed does not matter. Some breeds are at greater risk of altitude sickness. Dogs with smashed faces, such as an English Bulldog, Pugs, Boston Terrier, and mixed breeds with a similar short muzzle. This is because they have a difficult time increasing their air intake fast enough to overcome the effects of elevation as quickly as other breeds can. Tip number one. Hydration is key when it comes to prevention. Always have a dog bowl with you and plenty of water and offer your pet water as often as you can. A good rule of thumb is to always give them water when you are drinking water. So, definitely to get one of these collapsible bowls, I'll put a link down below on where you can get them. They're really cool and our puppy dog carries it on his... <laughs> our puppy dog carries this on his back and we'll show you how he does that. Uh, Spock carries his bowl. He's got it connected to his harness there. Um, so he carries it for himself and then we bring bottled water with us. The adorable dogs on the Husky and Wolf Dog YouTube channel. They live in Europe, where altitude can change very quickly. Their parents know the importance of making sure dogs are hydrated when traveling in altitude. Tip number two. The first couple of days that you're in altitude, take it slow. Keep them on a leash so you can keep them at your side and encourage a lot of breaks. Don't let them run ahead of you. Keep them at a controlled speed. Tip number three. If you live at sea level or lower elevations, it is always a good plan to go to 5,000 or 6,000 feet before going above 8,000 and spending some time there. Driving from sea level to 10,000 feet and hoping that you can get out and take a big hike is just too hard on your animals. So, you know that old saying that you can't lead a dog to water? Well, it's pretty true. How many times do you take your dog out? Try to get him some water if he just won't drink. So, our last and best tip, feed them wet food instead of kibble so they can get the moisture that they need. This is my old girl. And thank you so much to the Husky and Wolf Dog YouTube channel. You can find their link in the description of this video. Make sure to check out the links in the description. They help support this channel. And thank you so much for coming by. You have no idea how much we appreciate it.